Our verse today is Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6. It reads, The foreigners I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their holocaust and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. End of quote. Isaiah 56 flags off the post-exilic discourse of a two century long prophecy. Isaiah chapters 1 to 39 represents the pre exilic material. Isaiah 40 to 55 evinces an exilic perspective, while Isaiah chapter 56 verse 66 is best read as a returnee's gospel. Why is this significant? The theological outlook of each segment of Isaiah is markedly different. First, Isaiah bemoans the infidelity of Judah and its neglect of justice and righteousness. Second, Isaiah consoles a people at a fringe of despair. And third, Isaiah announces the joyous themes of regeneration and restoration. A key index in the theological evolution of Isaiah's prophecy is its perception of foreigners. In Isaiah chapters 1 to 39, the hegemony of Babylon was an existential threat to the safety and sovereignty of Judah. In Isaiah chapters 40 to 55, the Persian king Cyrus was scandalously addressed as the Messiah because he conquered Babylon and ordered that the gold and silver looted from the Jerusalem temple be returned. In Isaiah chapters 56 to 66, pious foreigners were allowed to worship alongside Jews on God's holy mountain, a synonym for the Jewish temple. What is the ideological trajectory of Jewish perception of foreigners in Isaiah? Stunned by God's unprecedented choice of a pagan king to liberate Judeans, prejudicial blanket assessment of foreigners was called into question. All foreigners, are they immoral, unjust, impious, wicked, and deceitful? If some foreigners associate with Jews, worship their God, observe their moral norms, and live decent human lives, what should prevent them from partaking in Israel's covenantal blessings? These probing questions were birthed by the most unusual historical circumstances. Jewish leaders plunging Judeans into exile while a Persian king shattered the shackles that bound God's holy people. Third, Isaiah teaches every generation of believers two crucial lessons. First, Theology must be nurtured by God's constant revelation in human history. Second, with God, foreigner and Jewish are not immutable qualities, but where one stands daily in the right covenantal relationship with God. This conviction has prompted these audacious assertions of third Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 18. I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 23. All mankind shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. The only nationality required is not one circumscribed by geography, but one forged in a dogged allegiance to the God of the covenant, who desires to redeem humanity in its entirety. Let us pray. Creator of heaven and earth, renew your covenant with humanity. Help us to love you with an undivided heart and serve each other in love and kindness through Christ our Lord. Happy Sunday to you all.